from day one, I've said that Israel has lost its biggest attraction and its biggest asset that it has always claimed, which is the absolute safety and security. Right now, Iran has, for the first time in its 45-year-old history since the revolution and since the existence of the uh, foreign apartheid colonial existence of this terrorist entity called Israel, Iran has for the first time uh, actually did a direct uh, reply and attack back in a defensive mode, but it has shown that it actually did come through, uh, not just through its proxies, but through itself directly. Now, what are the implications of this? The people in Israel have been in a reverse migration since October 7th, sometimes at a higher level, sometimes at a lower level, uh, depending on the psychological state of what is going on. That is what's most important, the psychological state. Remember that all of the people in Israel are practically foreigners, except a very, very few percentage who themselves acknowledge and, and view themselves as Palestinian Jews. Those are not the uh, Zionists that are considered the foreigners. Those are just uh, Palestinians that happen to be Jewish, just like there are Palestinians that happen to be atheists or Christian or Muslims, or they don't know what they believe in. The point, today, the psychological state of affairs of the Zionists that are in Israel are going to be, their psychological state is going to be getting worse and worse with the passing of time. Israel has two options right now. Either it responds to the response that Iran has done, or it does not. If it does not respond, it means that it will say to its people, supposedly, that we will be hit and we will not respond, which means that we are the weaker end of the equation. Israel is not going to do that because Israel has this evil plan always. Uh, just like it did its first attack on the embassy of the uh, Iranian uh, Republic in Syria to drag the U.S. into a regional war, it simply, it simply didn't do that by mistake. It did it based on a plan. The plan is to drag the U.S. into a regional war because it feels that the U.S. has been getting sick of Israel, just like that unwanted child that keeps on making their father, uh, just keeping on defending them and pulling them out of trouble, and they keep on getting themselves in trouble and keep on doing bad things, and the father just cannot let go of that child. But Israel is not really the child of America. Israel is just a foreign body, a foreign government, a terrorist entity, that exists and just tries to control and successfully has been controlling the U.S. up until the point now when people on, in the U.S. are waking up. So the point is that Israel did the first attack in an attempt to drag the U.S. into a regional war. It got the response back from Iran by those approximately 200 missiles and drones that were attacked, uh, that Israel was attacked by uh, directly from Iran. And my thinking is that it will respond. And if it responds again, Iran will respond yet again. What is, again, the implication on the psychological state of affairs of the people that are the settlers in Israel, they will be more scared, there's going to be more reverse migration. Uh, if this cycle, this vicious cycle of attacks continues, and my guess is that it will continue until either America uh, is involved into a, the regional war, and therefore, this war will expand drastically, including all of Iran's capability, all of Yemen's, all of Syria's, all of Iraq's, all of Lebanon's, and uh, forces joining into the war. And then the world will take their alliances. Uh, so this is going to be either a regional war or a world war, which is terrible. But uh, this is probably what's going to happen. Or that... The U.S. shuts down Israel and tells it to shut the hell up and stop being a terrorist rogue state and they get rid of Netanyahu and his gangs and put them in prison and start to pull an apologetic uh, narrative and end this whole ordeal. So that being said, uh, the 
overall impact of all of this is very positive for the freedom of the Palestinian people and the eventual um, uh, this let me not say that uh, but in the uh, changing of the regime uh, that exists under the apartheid state of Israel so that Israel will no longer exist as it does now because most of its people will hopefully be leaving because they shouldn't be there to begin with so let's see how this pans out with this ongoing craziness and we pray to God to free Palestine free Palestine from this occupation and free America from the control of the Zionists and free the world from the Zionist control we were told that Gaza was occupied by Israel turns out that the whole world is occupied by the Zionists except Gaza which is waking up the whole world free Gaza free Palestine and free the world from Zionism